Hello, hello, and welcome back to Lawrence Place Factorio Space Exploration. I'm still back on Norvis, just, well, because, I don't know, it's comfortable down here. This is my home. And what have I been doing? Well, one of the things I've been talking about a little bit recently was this um, pending uh, coronal mass ejection that's um, four and a half hours away. Oh, that's how long I've been playing for. That's a terrifying number. Let's ignore that. Uh, this coronal mass ejection that's just under five hours away. So in an attempt to get ready for that, I built up this system over here. So this is my nuclear reactor system and I've joined all of it to get all of the pipes together. So so there's a link between the um, between all well between all of them. And then I've run the pipes down here and I've also whacked in all of these uh, tanks along here and then these um, extra turbines down here over the end and then I ran out. Um, but I tried. And these are all f gradually, in theory at least, these are gradually filling up. So last time I looked it was at about a million. So it's gone up another 400,000 since then. So that's pretty good. We're we're getting it, we're getting stuff in. Um, the problem is I I had a look at this, these um, boilers and yeah, some of them work. Some of them are working nicely like this one. Where you see here we've got um, water consumption 103 out of 103 per second. Steam 103 per second as well. Uh, this one down here at this end uh, has water available but is producing zero out of 103 per second. Now the prob the reason this isn't working quite as smoothly as I would ideally like is basically because these pipes are full. Um, pipes have a relatively low throughput unfortunately and when you've got uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 12, 24, 48 um, heat exchangers generating 100 steam each uh, per second the pipes just can't can't deal with it so yeah um, in theory these these tanks should be filling up fairly quickly but a lot of these uh, these aren't really working flat out on the flip side I don't know how much I care about that um, right so I, I also I did I did the maths for this so if we if we take another look at the um, the the the, uh, the coronal mass ejection that's looming. So it's 2.28 gigawatts peak power, 182 gigajoules over 120 seconds. Now those two numbers don't directly respond uh, relate to each other. 182 gigajoules divided by 120 120 isn't 2.28. Um, so that that's because the, but that's because the power sort of starts low, ramps up, and then ramps back down again. So it's it that that's fine. It's it, it's just it's, but these are the numbers I need to work with. So. When I'm generating power using one of these turbines, they use 60 steam per second in order to generate 5.8 megawatts of power. Uh, putting the numbers in for 2.28 gigawatts um, total, um, yes, uh, sorry, peak, peak. 2.28 gigawatts peak means I would would need about 400 turbines, just just on 393, but almost 400 turbines. Now, I've got how many? Have I, how many have I even got? One, two, three, four, five. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, so it's 40, 80, and then I think there's another 100 here. So I've got, I've got almost 200, so that's about half what I need. But I've also got these massive banks of accumulators somewhere. Here, I've got these massive banks of accumulators that can put, provide some more of that, that power when I need it. And these are all completely full because there's loads of electricity in my base because I've got a big nuclear power plant. So between them, I'm hoping that should be that should be enough to provide the peak power. The question is, have I got the peak capacity? And so, 182 gigajoules means um, 32,000 turbine seconds worth of power, um, which means 1.9 million steam, which is 75 tanks. So over here, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. No, those aren't tanks. 80, 80 tanks of steam there, so that is enough. That's more, cause more than 75. So, so if these are all full, then I've got more than enough steam to to to, um, to power every, to keep everything running and keep everything ticking over to keep, to keep the umbrella defence up for the whole time. The problem, is, the question, is whether these turbines can convert the steam into electricity quickly enough. And my concern is that because of the um, the limited flow through the pipes, we might not be able to get the steam from the tanks into the turbines quickly enough to ramp that whole thing up to full. So what I probably should do is put out some more rows of turbines going upwards and downwards from here, just to get a bit more more direct connections to the uh, to the tanks essentially to, to enable me to get a bit more a bit more throughput and hopefully therefore a bit more power. 
So, let's see, between them, I've got 80 gigajoules in the um, in the accumulators. So that's that's nearly half the power I need for the um to 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 ward off the um the, the attack, should we call it, should we say? And I've got and they're capable of producing unlimited power um over a sort of a short period. So uh, I mean, obviously, the, the more power you produce, the faster they'll run out. But there's no limit to how much power they can produce for a tiny, for a fraction of a second. So, so they will be able to hit the peak of uh, of 2.28 gigawatts. They'll just only be able to hit it for what that divided by th for sort of 10 uh, for 30 seconds or so. Um, so. I've basically, I've used a lot of words to say I'm not really sure whether it's going to work or not. <laughs> there is probably there is enough power in there is enough power in these tanks to keep the whole to keep the whole system uh, to, to, to to defend against an entire um, attack an entire mass ejection. I'm capable of producing 1.2 gigawatts from the um, 1.21 gigawatts. Yes, <laughs> oh dear, uh, from the um, from the turbines. So and and that will um, and that's about half the peak, but the um, the accumulators can provide the rest. So yeah, it comes down to are they going are the are the turbines going to be able to provide enough power while it's less while the power demands are lower that when the power demands go higher, the accumulators will be able to top will have enough power left in them to top them up. And to be honest, we're not going to find out for four hours and 40 minutes because I have no real idea how to work that out um, I mean I could probably I suppose I could draw a graph that has a sort of a, a peak level of uh, of 1.2 gigawatts ac across the bo bottom <clears throat> um, for 100 over 120 seconds and assume it's going to last for assume it's going to be at full power for that long which it isn't um, and then see if the area above that graph going up to a peak of 2.2 um, gigawatts is is less than 80 gigajoules. Um, let me think about that. Okay, so I've, I've thought about it a little bit. Um, 1.2 gigawatts for 120 seconds is about 140 gigajoules. Um, which plus the 80 gigajoules here is more than the 182 gigajoules um, that uh, that is required for the for the um, for the mass ejection. So in the absolute ideal situation, it would be it would be enough, and I'd have about 40 gigajoules spare capacity. Now, because it ramps up and ramps down, it's not going to be quite as ideal as I'm as I'm sort of implying. So it's that's going to cut into my um, 40 gigajoules spare. But it might be enough. I'm going back to say we're just going to have to wait and see how it goes. It's interesting to see here, though, that I have um, enough, almost have enough solar to power the entire base, and most of the nuclear is just being wasted at the moment. And the, this is what I was saying in the previous episode about keeping the, uh, these, these reactors on all the time. Most of the heat these are producing is just being completely wasted. However, hopefully, it, um, some of it is going to be going into filling these tanks up, and we're now at 1.6 um, million steam. So, mega mega steams, 1.6 mega steams, yes. So, maybe, maybe this will be full in the next fill up in the next four hours. Anyway, I've talked about that far too much now. So let's go on and have a look at something else. The other thing I've been doing is working towards. Let me open the picture up for this, so I can have something to talk about. The other thing I've been doing is getting my um, ast astronomic science up and running up here on the in my in, in my um, spa on my space station, and this was this is pretty this is kind of complicated. Uh, so at the end of the last episode, I got my telescopes being made here and my film. What is it called? I can't remember what it calls them. Um, frames for the telescopes being made here. I was pumping those through, and this is this is all working quite nicely. As you can see, I've got a nice backlog of all these frames, uh, green, yellow, and blue ones. That's that's working well. The next step was to was to um, do something with those frames and and, uh, and take and, and copy the data off them onto these memory cards that are being fed in here. Now I point at these ones at the top of the belt because, yeah, as the observant among you will have noticed, this belt is completely empty. I'll get onto that in a moment. Uh, but then these are producing, then in theory at least, the um, green, 
blue and yellow um, memory sticks with with data on. They also produce junk data and and scrap as well. So those are getting fed off down, and I'll uh, get onto that as well in a bit. And so what we've got here is. Um, one belt here that's got the green ones and the yellow ones on and then another one that's got the blue ones on so that that's pretty straightforward um, the next step is the uh, th these um, facilities here which turn all of those memory cards into these ones the swirly ones which are which are called um, oh, those, those are astronomic astronomic data so that's the next step and then you combine all of those once again in uh, in these computers to get the oh dear which ones this is these are the catalogs apparently Ooh, I'm under attack. Let's see where that is. Right, okay, so this is what I've said before about the um, the turrets that are stuck right out on the end. They t if you tend to get the attacks coming in almost along the coast, because that's the way biters path. Um, where is this, anyway? Oh, it's right over there. Okay. And so that means that, that you tend to get the biters at one end getting all of the um, abuse. And what I should, in theory, do here is build them out into the sea a bit so they can fire upwards as well and you get a bit more coverage but I apparently haven't done that but because I've got um, bots down here to do this I'm gonna put some more turrets in there because I mean this should be a solid wall all the way down anyway um, so we can get we can put the put the turrets down put the inserters down and by the magic of automation it'll all, it'll all start to fill itself up and hopefully that'll be enough um, defenses for next time oh actually I should copy these dragon's teeth down as well I don't know why I am um, didn't finish this bit off but there we go that we'll leave them to finish that off now where was I before I was so rudely interrupted oh yes the, making the um, the catalogs here so this this is just taking in all of all of the ingredients I've made and making and making the next ingredient in the process um, but it's, it's a slight a slight twist from most things you have to use all of those ingredients in order to make the fourth ingredient for them as well so it's a, a little bit more complicated than normal but yeah but then we have the same sort of thing happening here again. <clears throat> we take in the catalogs here and we have in, in, into this one to make the next step, uh, which is insights, I think. I don't know. The, the cylind cylindrical ones, anyway. So you take in cubes, you make cylinders. Sure. Makes perfect sense. Uh, problem is, these take. What is it? 30 something? No, it's obviously not that one. It's these ones that take loads. So the, these will then sort of trickle out the uh, the cubes, and they also spit out the uh, the finished with the memory cards they finished with as well, which is nice. They don't put out as many as they take in, I don't think, because um, this takes four. This take <laughs> okay. This one takes in three and produces. Oh, it produces three. Okay. This one takes in four and produces one, and then this takes in one and produce it and spits back out two so we're, lo we're losing two of the cards each each time we, we run this but um Celebi. then over here same sort of thing again but, but this just requires a lot more of the insights but it does spit out a lot most of the a lot of the cards have been used as well so maybe we're only losing a quarter of them at this point um anyway so this is this is the stage where it's got to at the moment before it just ran out of stuff and you then pass all of those things over into the machine at the end here, and that'll produce the actual science packs that I want. Um, but the problem I've run into here, and the reason there aren't any memory cards, is because they require, where over here, you need the, the the substrates to make them, and that requires the glass supply, which has, of course, run out. Um, just, yeah, used, used it all up. So we need to ship some more of that up here. Uh, once that's here, well, I think this, this should all start working though, because I've got everything else I need in here. Uh, the other thing I'm a bit short of actually, come think, uh, now, now I think of it, was one of the thermofluids. Was it? Oh yes, yeah, so just the generic warm stuff, um, and that's because I've run out of I've run out of iron as well. So the next step is for me to fly back up to my rocket up here. And as, as I'm sure you remember, <laughs> I've put in the um, the demands on all of, on these um, combinators to say how much of everything is supposed to be up there. The negative numbers there get added to the um, the amounts on the um, on the on the other on the other side, and that comes up with a, a total. And as long as that's less than zero, we load more in, so we end up with the amount I've, I've uh, requested. So what I've done here, nice nice and simple, I've increased the um, amount of glass it's demanding to much to 20,000 because I seem to be getting through a lot of it basically I, I want to have a lot more up there so this now this rocket is now mostly full of glass and it's also got the iron in there um, to, in order to make some more of that thermofluid as I was talking about and just the generic other stuff that's needed up there I also noticed that it's full we've got, oh, we've got a load more of the um, 
what are these things? Uh, scaffolds as well, because I've been I've been ripping through those, making expanding the uh, the space station, and I wanted some more logistics bots up there as well. So now that's basically everything I need for this. So I, if I head up there, Novus Orbit landing pad, good launch. And as you can see, it starts to fill up with miscellaneous stuff again. But most of this is going to be useful at some point, so I'd, I'm not too upset about this. At some point, I'll probably stop taking water up in barrels and take it up by delivery cannon instead, just just because it's cheaper in space and efficient, just general efficiency and stuff. <laughs> there we go. Touchdown. Okay, so now the, um, the bots start doing everything. Let's take those logistics bots and put them in here so they can join in the fun. There we go. And now hopefully these bots will... What are they, really, what are they loading at the moment? Okay, they're loading up the, um, the science facilities at the moment and the low density structures. Okay, that's just because that's what's being lift, taken across, presumably. I wonder how the... Oh, it's working from the bottom up. Okay. So it's going to be a little while until it gets to the glass. So I'll, um, I'll fast forward a bit and um, catch you in a moment. Actually, it occurred to me I could just do this bit manually. <laughs> uh, then we won't have to wait. Is this glass? Yes, this is glass. There we go. And some iron as well. Let's put some iron in this one. Yes. Oops. Yes. Right, so that'll get everything work uh, everything up and running again, at least to an extent. As I was saying, the glass will come down here to this this, this one in particular that, uh, that really needs it. And now you can see this has, started, this has kicked in and started working. Now, one of the other things I've done is put in some more of these uh, machines building the substrate, because that was definitely the bottleneck with create, creating the memory cards. Uh, we can build those up with these machines, shove them all in here. This polishes them using the orange goo and then passes them into here to be made into the um, the actual memory cards that I need. Now as you can see this machine is only running occasionally I could probably put in another one of these up here um, and feed with another four machines feeding into it and start making them a bit quicker. I may well end up doing that because well I'll, I'll see how this goes. It might be that this is now capable of producing enough um, with, it, with an unlimited glass supply, maybe this is capable of producing enough memory cards to keep everything ticking over. And I think once once things start running properly, I'm going to get a certain amount of memory cards being recycled and shoved back into the into the machine, in, back into the system rather. But yeah, we'll see how that goes. So now, as the memory cards are made, they can make their way down here on this belt with the coal. Uh, yeah, I mixed coal and memory cards. Just I don't know. I didn't want to make a full bus with one belt per product because the, um, the the space belts and the space scaffold are so expensive in that there's they're, they're sort of limited resources at the moment just because there's a sh so much of them I have to bring up here that I didn't really want to do that. So here we go, these um, these feed up here. Um, oh, I've taken out the, um, the red inserters from these two because I had more than enough of the green things and I was trying to get some of the yellow ones because that was the what I was limited by. Um, so I'll have to put them back in soon, but at the moment, yeah, there's lots and lots of, and oh no, there's a blue ones. There's actually not a lot of green ones. I should get those. I should set the green ones going again as well. But as you can see, these little spinning orrery things are um, are analysing the the data from the um, from the telescopes, putting it onto memory cards, which they eventually spit out like like that. Goes down here, down here. It's, which way did that one go? It went up here. Okay, interesting. I've got it's. There's plenty up there. This is now. What's this short of? Because that just went straight past. I'm in map mode, not. Can actually look at things mode. Let's fly over there because that way I can fiddle with things if I need to. Because I'm slightly puzzled as to what I'm short of over here. Right. Why are you not running? Oh, you need the green ones. Okay. That at least is easily fixed. Let's just set one of these going for now. Um, that's actually... That's got, that has managed to do some. It's a bit of a waiting game, unfortunately. Um, because, yeah, it's, it's, it's quite a slow process. I obviously need to streamline this, get a lot more memory cards being pumped through here. So I think I am going to need to go over and put in the at least one one more of those sets of things making the uh, making the substrates and maybe 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 more than that. Well I'll go over and have a think about that in a moment. I hope I hope I've brought the machines up I need for it. 
So this is running. As you can see, this has a this has a small chance, a one percent chance of producing a junk data card, and a twelve percent chance of producing scrap. <clears throat> Those are fed down these sort of belt these belts down here and spat out onto these return systems. Um, I've, I've decided it's easier just to return everything and then sort it out later. So here we've got a memory, a used memory card being shipped back along. Um, that is actually a perfectly good memory card. They aren't always perfectly good ones, but that one is. You can tell because it's, um, it's still got the white shading on it. Uh, so these then get passed back along here and fed up into here. And both both sorts come in here. We got with the, the good ones get immediately passed back down onto this belt. The, do, the dodgy ones get passed onto here into this into this computer, which will then attempt to recycle them where it passes them back across here. And then if they it tries to recycle them, if it succeeds, they go through here and they're reused. If it if it fails, they turn into scrap, which comes down on this down to this belt here, which I mentioned earlier, which is carrying all of the scrap like that piece. And that all gets at the moment that just gets dumped in a chest over here. And then whenever I go back down to Norvis, I take it with me and I um. I, I, I bung it into my recycling plants down there. Uh, I might be able to turn it into something more useful. Let's have a quick look for that, actually. Let's try and learn to spell. So scrap can be turned into a number of things. Um, it can be turned into ores, which is what I'm doing down on Norvis, because that seemed like the best return. Or landfill, or put into a deliver... Okay, that's all rubbish. I don't want to do any of that. I'll, st I'll stick with uh, taking it back down and turning it into ore. That's, that's fine. So what was I saying? Yeah, so the, the, the memory cards all get recycled around here, and the the, uh, the good ones are passed along here, and into here into this system. And and this is cunningly designed so that the the good me the new the new memory the recycled memory cards end up on the bottom, the new ones end up on the top. So that means that if coming up here, the the, the recycled ones will get used first, and down here I've got this bit in so that again the, they're on the bot. The recycled ones are on the bottom, so they're on this side. So they'll go yeah, so they'll get used first as well. Um, and that's basically common sense. The, the point of this is to make sure that you never have this machine pushing out more and more memory cards when this is backing up, um, because eventually this will back up and back up and back up and clog the whole system up. Now that's going to be a long, long way off the rate I'm producing memory cards at at the moment, but it's still it's it's something I want to be. I want to make sure that doesn't happen, <coughs> because yeah, I need the uh, I need the memory cards to keep coming through. Is this doing anything exciting up here yet? What are you doing? Oh, you're you're building up my uh, scaffolding. That's fine. Uh, right. So this is still not enormously exciting over here because there's still massive shortages of pretty much everything. Over here, yeah, we're still sh we're still short of the um, yellow memory cards. Oh, yeah. Yellow memory cards now, is it? Okay. Hang on, these colours are too difficult to tell apart. That one's yellow. Let's take this back out again. So that goes up there. This will make a yellow memory card out of it and it'll fling it around here and we'll, we'll get one. If it's, it's probably both green and yellow that are, that are, um, are, that are limited because... Yeah, because they're, they're running off a single feed but basically I need to make more lots more memory cards and all my problems will be solved <laughs> uh, yeah so it, it's this thing here that requires the 30 36 astro astronomic insights and I just haven't got them uh, they're, they're just not being made quickly enough there's there's a few over here but that's not enough to top it up I could nick the ones in here there's five in here but yeah you get the you get the idea that I I need to push through a lot more of this before I can actually start making those so I'm gonna fly back over here get it building more memory cards because that's that's definitely the priority at this point that's a, a ridiculous bottleneck I wish there was a way of telling what sort of duty cycle this machine had I reckon I can make this twice more and still not have a shortage now question is do I have any decontamination facilities if I do then it's absolutely fine I can I can build up more of this if not then those are things I should have brought up from the planet and I haven't and I'm going to feel silly so let's. Oh, don't fly off into space. <laughs> so I'll put this down. Bots will come out, fill that in for me. I can then find out if I have any more of these. Um, or alternatively, I can find a one of them. Uh, I've got four of something, but I can't tell what it is. It doesn't look like it's quite the right colour, though. It looks like it's a red version of it, which is probably something else. Yeah, it's a life support facility, not a decontamination facility. Booey. I don't. And can I, can I make them? 
Oh, yes, I actually have the stuff to make those. Thank goodness for that. Okay, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna get on with this. Um, I'll uh, I'll stop I'll stop sort of um, just inflicting me talk me staring at things and trying to do and trying to sort of do numbers and guess whether, whether I've got things or not in my head and I'll, uh, I'll let you get on with your lives. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time when I'll have, uh, have hopefully got this up and working a bit faster. But till then, well, thanks for watching. <laughs>